yo, 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 what's goody with it? Today's video is about Volvos. What do I know about Volvos? I don't know that much, actually. You don't know shit, you dumb fuck. I know they're Swedish. I know they're supposed to be safe. I know a lot of them are turbo. I know they got some diesels. I used to work at a Volvo dealership in New Jersey. I was a porter. You take out the trash, you clean the shop, you go gas up the rental cars. You do bitch work. For me, it was fun because I could drive new Volvos. That was my favorite part. You take the rental car to go get gassed up and then you can just rip it all the way to the gas station, which is like a quarter mile straight away. Um, anyway, I found these three kids on Instagram who have pretty cool Volvos. And I hit them up and I was like, hey, can do you want to just shoot a little piece on your cars and what you've done to them and what they mean to you? And they were like, yeah, for sure, come through. So uh, yeah, here's what I made. My family and girlfriend know very well that this car is another part of me. Can't really foresee myself owning any other vehicle. It's just, it's such a great car and, and it's an investment, like I said, this car will last me. I will, this car, I will die before this car dies. Yeah, these are just been stuff from scrap Volvos I bought for parts cars, and the next thing I know, I just start ripping the thing apart because it's impossible. It's either you buy a part for $200 or you buy a whole car for $400. So I would just pick up a whole car, rip it apart for as much as I can, scrap it, get my money back on the scrap because the cars are pretty heavy as long as you have the motor and rear in it. And besides that, it's all just rare parts that like you can't just find. You can't. But half the stuff you can't buy on the internet, you can't find it. You either gotta trade it with people, or try to make it yourself, or you just rock a broken car. Most of us have something hangling or dangling or cracked or something. <laughs> it's almost impossible to find like a fully mint Volvo that's all there from 30 years old, you know? Like this, this is like, this is like gold. A gas door, a gas door. <laughs> so, Cause they're just common to break. They just start to save them. Cause nothing looks worse than a car missing a gas store. Personally, I, I like the Volvo wagons over the sedans just in general. That's why I like wagons. But uh, I didn't really choose my first Volvo. It kind of chose me. I got in a car accident and had, I had no car. And it was actually the first station wagon I ever saw that was a manual transmission. And I was like, I just need to have this. And I knew nothing about Volvos when I bought it, but I bought it from a mechanic in town. And I ended up driving that car across country as well. And I fell in, that's when I fell in love with Volvos. When I bought a $400, another $400 wagon and drove it across the country for three months with nothing into it. This was, this was my, original, my original baby. But uh, yeah, this had an LS1 in it with a Tremec. And uh, me and a friend, Aaron, went to uh, get tacos. That's all I remember is I got tacos and I woke up in the hospital. But apparently um, we got rear-ended at, at like full speed waiting to pull in my driveway and pushed into a head-on collision. So it just like waffled the car and uh, we both kind of walked away miraculously just shocked. But I don't remember anything besides eating tacos and waking up. And that was it. But the car definitely saved my life. Our lives for sure. It's got no power steering, no AC. Uh, the, like the PCV system has been kind of rerouted. Uh, the coil is in the inside the car. Um, 
ABS delete, I forgot, so I had to remake new lines and a prop block. Uh, it's got a, un, like a different radiator, so I was able to delete the uh, overflow can and all that. Um, it's got like a full, like the whole bumper's been deleted, it's all caged here, so this is a quick, quick release if I gotta get somewhere. Um, I just got these wheels, they're three-piece Epsilons from a old like Ferrari setup. different you know everyone's got a Volkswagen or Audi and anything European I've always liked. Uh, this car came from my cousin he uh, had a bicycle shop and somebody traded him this car for a bicycle which he had the car for a couple years it didn't run it sat for a year in my driveway where uh, my dad was very unhappy with that. And uh, I ended up getting it running I drove it around for about a year or so stock uh, then I started throwing parts at it that I accumulated over the years, and then um, just where it's at now. Uh, it's a Chevy 5.3. Uh, eventually, uh, it started off as an O2 motor. It's, right now, it's got a new block and 08 internals in it, so it's a little stronger to beef your rods. And it's got a 78-75 turbo running on Megasport, uh, EFI Source Gold Box, some 80-pound injectors. It's a five-speed trans out of a Chevy Colorado, and it's got a twin disc in it, and it runs pretty good. It's got 8,000 miles on its motor. I've been driving it ever since. Again, it gets daily driven, uh, rain, <laughs> you know, floods. I drive the car. The rear window blinds, it's probably my favorite thing, but uh, no, nah, I'd say the front end's my favorite, just the way it looks. You know, the wheel fitment, you know, going fast is always fun. <laughs> you know, blowing the tires off, it's good. When I first bought the car, it had, um, you know, it had it had multiple issues. It had intermittent stalling. It was it was overheating. It didn't feel like it was getting enough fuel. Um, the brakes weren't the greatest. So when I bought the car, there were things that had to get done to the car. So it's it's got 140 something uh, thousand miles on it right now. Um, about 220 horsepower at the wheel. Um, by the time we're said done with it, um, it should be close to 260 at the wheel with the boost turned up on a 16T. So um, I'm running 10 PSI right now. Um, I don't, I like to be conservative with it. Um, I have a turbo camshaft, um, 102 degree just, uh, lobe. Um, and I have a uh, turbo camshaft and they're offset to five degrees. So the engine has a higher power band on it um, as well. Currently, my buddy and I, we are taking a TD04 HL 16T turbo and, mat and uh, fabricating that to fit onto a 90 plus manifold, which takes a little bit of work, but he's, you know, we, we're, we're in the process of doing that right now. The goal of this is to keep this as OEM as possible while adding tasteful modifications to it. So the engine will stay um, because that is a large portion of what this car is. There's no other car out there like a 740, honestly. And it's brought so much, so many memories. I've met so many great people and it's changed my life in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, I, I cannot speak highly enough about the great things that have happened with myself and this car and the people that I've met. And I wouldn't change it for the world. I would not change it for the world. <laughs>